right, well, I am here on day one of the Blister Summit with Chris Dominic from ZipFit, and I am super excited to have this conversation with you. Those that know me know that I have a real affinity for ZipFit, so it'll be really interesting to hear from you. And I just want to first hear a bit of background about the brand and maybe your role with the company. Sure. Well, first of all, thanks, Kara, for putting on this event and including ZipFit. We're very excited to be here. Uh, like you mentioned, I'm Chris Dominic, Managing Director at ZipFit. Uh, I also have the privilege of being um, the grandson of Sven Coomer's wife, Mary Amazing. Dominic. <laughs> uh, so Sven Coomer founded ZipFit and ran the company with my grandma for many, many years. And a few years ago, I took over. Well, I really just started helping them with Jeff Colt and Thomas May. And uh, we've been running the company for a few years now, just trying to carry Sven's legacy and do our best to make people's feet happy. Yeah, it's amazing. I know ZipFit has a real kind of heritage and legacy in the ski industry, so I'd love to dive into that a bit. And then, of course, through the last few years, we've also seen it grow quite a bit, so that's been really interesting to track. Um, so, yeah, if you just want to get into that history as far as yeah. Sven's dream and how it all came to be. Yeah, Sven, um, and I'm sure you know this, but Sven's been in, in the ski industry for his basically his whole professional life. He um, was around from the transition from the leather inner or the leather boot into a plastic shell mm -hmm. and he felt like there was always something really critical missing in that transition i mean he acknowledges the uh, benefits of a plastic shell the power transmission the replicability all of those things he he totally acknowledges but he felt like something was really missing during that transition mm -hmm. uh, and his sort of response to that was always that more emphasis needed to be put on the inner boot is what he called it, but the zip fit or the ski boot liner. Mm -hmm. And uh, he advocated for the investment into that inner boot forever, but because it's something that exists on the inside of the shell, it's hard for the marketing teams of these shell companies to like grab onto it and uh, invest the energy and the resources needed to really build a quality liner. Mm -hmm. Um, so after his whole career in the in the shell industry, he decided to branch off and start kind of tinkering using the connections that he made uh, throughout his career in northern Italy, where the boots zipfits are still made. Mm -hmm. um, and he started producing in nor northern Italy uh, in a town called Montebelluna, and we're still doing it there. Yeah, it's incredible. And um, for those who may or may not know, I mean, I spent over a decade as a boot fitter, and I feel like there's so much emphasis put on the, the shell of the boot and not enough placed on the liner. And so it's really interesting how Sven's approach was all about the liner. And so maybe just get into some of what his vision was as far as like, what, what was he going for yeah. when it came to the maybe liner? Yeah, I'll just grab one. Yeah. Um, his, the, the sort of the main emphasis of Sven's like kind of overarching idea of, of the inner liner and the role that plays within the shell is that the inner liner is responsible for allowing the foot to be in the proper position inside of the shell. Um, and there are, you know, multiple aspects of the zip fit that uh, allow for like proper heel retention and, and appropriate foot placement. Uh, and, you know, people obviously, and for just cause, focus in on the cork inside of a zip fit. And that's, a, we can talk about that. But mm -hmm. Sven spent a lot of his career dialing in the cut and the position and all of the different materials he was dialing in. And I think that there's a lot that goes into a zip fit well beyond the cork um, that is responsible for, you know, the, the quality ski that you and I know so and love so well. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll talk, um, I mean, about the cork and where that cork is placed in that sort of key fit zone and why that's so important. Um, but I'm also curious to hear a bit about just the whole composition of the liner and all the materials you guys build into the yeah. liners. Yeah, so, I mean, just starting kind of from the forefoot, working our way up, the forefoot of a zip fit is neoprene. Out, that's what we see out here. And, and that's a really important material because it does a really good job of stretching with the anatomy of someone's forefoot. So unlike a conventional liner that is sort of a, you know, it's a fixed position, this is going to fit your toe area, almost like a sock or like a neoprene booty. Um, so if you have a narrow forefoot, it's going to conform to that and, and, and give you support in that area. And if you have a wide forefoot, which we, we have a lot of skiers with wider forefeet, uh, it's going to allow for your toes to spread out. And, and that's a really critical piece of our balance comes from our ability to have flexibility and dexterity in our toes. So um, that's an important material is the neoprene. And then underneath the 
neoprene. What you don't see is there's a layer of thin slit for insulation and then a layer of merino wool on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, so they're very warm in this area. And then working our way back, back up into the ankle zone, uh, the exterior on this particular liner is a microfiber. And then underneath that is the cork. So um, I actually have a nice little prop here. Nice. So you can see this is the general position of the cork pouch mm -hmm. inside of the ankle. Um, and this is actually, this is more or less the correct size cork pouch for this size liner. Um, so you can see the um, cork pouch, there's one over each ankle, and then the port comes out here behind the second eyelet. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's also a cork bladder that is in the tongue, so that goes from the shin down over into the instep. Um, and then going up, we have uh, the stealth honeycomb material, and that material does a really good job of grabbing the inside of the shell, so you get a lot of uh, vibration dampening and also um, more seamless transmission of power into the shell from your lower body. Uh, and then we have the power strap, which Sven was one of the first uh, ski boot designers to use a power strap and a ski boot at all. And then we have the lacing system. And uh, Sven equates this lacing system almost like a, like a Formula F1 um, seat belt, whereas you know, a normal seat belt just comes across the waist. The, the race car drivers have a totally different style of seatbelt that attaches, you know, f almost like a harness and it pulls them back. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine that, that sensation of your foot being pulled back into the heel pocket. Um, and that is largely in part or due to the lacing system. Um, so the heel retention in the zip fit is amazing, as I know you can attest to. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. I feel all that you're mentioning really touches on that like movement reduction, which is like one of the most important things you can achieve inside of a ski boot. Mm -hmm. um, so it's cool to hear how all those elements play together to really keep that snug, secure fit. And of course, now I'm also curious to hear about what really makes it fit unique, which is the ability to add volume and then kind of mold that volume and continue to add volume if need be. So maybe just explain that process. Sure. A bit. Yeah, like, um, you know, we talked about the cork a little bit and just its position inside the, the liner. And um, Sven very intentionally chose cork uh, for a number of reasons. He actually, in the sort of early days of Zipfit, he was using silicone injection. Um, but he quickly transitioned to using cork, number one, because, uh, again, it's a really efficient transmitter of energy. So we use the analogy all the time of, uh, taking a wine cork and throwing it against the ground and the rebound you would get mm. off of the wine cork compared to a piece of like carpet foam, which is basically what a, a conventional ski boot liner is made out of. You throw that against the ground, it's just going to die on the ground. And you can really feel that in the inside of the shell, you get a lot more feedback from the snow because the cork is a much more efficient transmitter of energy. And also the, the energy that you're putting into your shells is much more efficiently transferred to, to your skis. So you get a lot more nuanced feel on your skis. So there's the power transmission. Uh, like you mentioned, the cork does a really good job of molding. Um, so you can hold this and that's a great prop, but yeah. um, it's at like room temperature now and you can tell it's nice and malleable. Our fitting process is we get it nice and warm and the warmer it gets, the more malleable that cork is and the more it wants to mold to your, the anatomy of your foot. Generally, the cork is moving away from areas of high pressure towards areas of low pressure. Mm -hmm. So it's simultaneously like relieving pressure points, but also adding support on your foot where your foot needs it. Uh, and that was always kind of Sven's like guiding principle is everyone's foot anatomy is different. Everybody um, needs something different out of a liner. And so instead of trying to make these micro adjustments and, and you know, us saying, oh, this is what your foot looks like. This is what I'm going to physically do to manipulate your mm -hmm. shell. We're relying on a material that just naturally does that and, and does a really good job of it. Yeah, that's key. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I mean, from my own experience, I've also found cork to be really good for shock absorption. So people who have maybe more rigid anatomy, I've kind of found that it's a it's a material that provides more shock absorption than maybe some other um, properties like foam injected liners that might be a little bit more rigid. So having a little softer material there can be really nice for totally. certain feet. Yeah. And, you know, unlike a foam injected liner, which does a lot of what we're talking about of filling in voids, moving away from areas of high pressure, the cork is constantly in motion throughout its lifespan. And we have many, many liners. We have a pro athlete that's helping us here at the Blister Summit that brought his liners with 800 ski days on them. And 
that's not an uncommon thing at all. Mm -hmm. um, but that cork is in movement throughout the entire lifetime of that liner. And that's really important. And Sven very aptly points out that anybody's foot will change dramatically over the course of the ski season. Like if you're a trail runner, you are developing muscles that are going to be, you know, decreasing over the course of the ski season. And so the ability for that, the cork inside of the zip fit to be constantly molding to your foot anatomy is really important. I mean, your foot changes dramatically, whether it's a warm day or a cold day, yeah. one day over the, over the next. And, and a zip fit is the only liner that can like properly accommodate for that change. Absolutely. And I've of course seen them also be molded to different shells throughout someone's zip fit lifetime. So yeah. that's also a unique attribute. Yeah. I mean, if you ski it for 800 ski days, you're going to go burn through a couple shells. Pro yeah. So, and I think we could just follow up with a bit more on maybe the craftsmanship and some of the longevity aspects of zip fit and uh, maybe just speak to how you kind of see zip fit as far as what they provide through a lifetime and what that lifetime of a liner looks versus maybe just a stock liner. So, you know, we're still making the liners in the same factory that we've been working with for the last 25 years. And I've been fortunate enough to go and visit that factory and see how much love and effort goes into the production of every zip fit liner. And it's something that we're really proud of for a number of reasons. Number one, you know, we talk about this at zip fit all the time, but ultimately we're in the business of making the thing that people love to do more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And if someone's spending 800 days in a zip fit ski boot liner, it's because every day that they've spent in it is an enjoyable experience. Um, so that's a really important part for us. And then the other side of it is, you know, when you consider like the life cycle analysis of a zip fit over a conventional ski boot liner, which lasts maybe a hundred ski days total, uh, a zip fit, which can really last into the 1000 ski day range. Mm -hmm. uh, it not only is a, a more efficient use of your money, but it's a much more efficient use of our resources. And we're proud of that. Yeah, it's amazing. And just to have that consistency from a liner, it's not um, day by day, you know, the liner's feeling a little bit looser each day, things like that. It's, yeah. I think that's a huge, huge part. We say zip fits break in, other liners break down. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I like that. Um, yeah, and then I know I've seen zip fit grow over the years, and I'm just would like to hear more about how your lineup currently looks. I know you've added some new models, and you're kind of providing a bit more offerings for people who want different things, including a touring liner and things yeah. like that. So, um, yeah, I'd just love to hear about the lineup. Yeah, well, before getting into the lineup, I just want to say, you know, our job at ZipFit now is to get people's eyes on Sven's genius. And so we, you know, Sven is next month going to be inducted into the Ski Boot Hall of Fame. He's going to be the first ski boot designer to ever be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Awesome. And we're really proud of that. And we also are eyes wide open about the fact that we're not going to find another Sven Coomer. Mm -hmm. And so our, uh, the way that we've had to change the uh, development of our liners has been a really important process for us. Number one, we still talk with Sven almost every day about the development of those liners. But the second and really important part is we're contract, not contracting, but we're, we're getting the feedback from our athletes, from our skiers, people who ski in our liners and, and sort of like crowdsourcing the development of those liners in a way that um, we're really proud of. And, and, you know, that's because we're not replacing Sven Coomer. And that Sven is an irreplaceable character. Yeah. He's the only ski boot designer to ever be inducted into the Hall of Fame. And we are eyes wide open about that and, and know that the only way to replicate his genius is to source that genius from our community. Mm. Um, so that's what we've done in the development of both the Corsa, which is this uh, yellow and blue liner and the GFT here. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe I'll start by just showing you the Corsa. Yeah, please. So this is our, um, this liner was specifically designed to work with a plug shell. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's our, it's the liner that's best suited in our line, in our fleet to uh, work inside a really low volume shell. So we did a number of things to amplify the fit inside that shell. Um, number one, you can see, or maybe you can't, but it's built on a more narrow last. Yeah. So that's really important for a plug shell. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a removable tongue, which is convenient because it allows us to look at the inside of the liner, um, which is full grain leather. This isn't the first zip fit to feature full grain leather on the inside, um, but it is full grain leather, uh, which does a really good job of conforming to the shape of your 
lower leg. You know, we talked about how zippets break in, other liners break down. Mm -hmm. A leather interior liner is almost like a, like, I don't know if you ever played baseball or softball, but the more you use your mitt, the more it like molds to your hand. And that's a similar feel with a leather liner. Um, the other thing we did is we increased the volume of the upper tongue. So you get almost like a more immediate delivery of your uh, power. So when you initiate your turn, you're just right there. Like you feel that turn grab really quickly. Um, but this was a great example of like, we have the ability to prototype really easily through our factory. Um, and we, like I said, we've been working f with them for 25 years. And so uh, we are able to at any time, you know, get on the horn with them, talk about ideas. And so we're, we're able to constantly be filtering feedback that we're getting from our athletes, our customers, and then feeding that to our factory, making prototypes. So it's just this really seamless transition. Uh, and that was also the case with the GFT, which is our very first uphill liner, which we're, we're really proud of. And I know um, has been received pretty well by the community. And um, I would say that this GFT is just the beginning of uh, this sort of evolution of ZipFit. And we're proudly making liners that service a aspect of our sport that we haven't really spoken to to date. Yeah, that's interesting. And um, I mean, with the GFT, it's interesting as well, because I feel like a lot of touring boots and touring liners are pretty compromised, um, especially to save weight. And so, you know, maybe you have the shell that works really well, but of course, then you're going out and you're dealing with a liner that packs out pretty quickly or just isn't as dense as you'd want to maintain the long term fit. And so the GFT has been an interesting one to see. Um, do you have anything else to say as far as why you went in that direction of a touring liner? Yeah, well, I mean, we went in that direction because we love to tour, mm -hmm. you know, we, we love going uphill and we love getting in the backcountry and being, you know, in wild places. And so we were doing that and selfishly to like go into those places without a zip fit on my feet was a bummer because I've skied zip fit basically my whole life. Yeah. Um, so we developed this product because it was something that we wanted. Um, and the number one kind of guiding principle when we undertook the development of the GFT was we're not servicing folks that are counting grams and are trying to, you know, win the Grand Traverse. That was never our intention when developing this liner. We really did want to develop something that had the range of motion that would allow us to use it in a backcountry setup, but ultimately would be a powerful tool for the ski downhill. And that's not to say that we won't ever develop a liner that is intentionally cutting weight. When, when and if we do develop that liner, we will still have an eye on how does it ski? Is it utilizing Sven's you know, core principles? Those things, the answer to those will always be it skis well. It is flexing Sven's genius. Um, but the GFT is meant to be a really powerful ski that has great range of motion. And, and we've been really proud of the way it's skied so far. Yeah, so it's interesting to hear about the latest developments and cool to see where that's gone as far as expanding the offerings both to a liner that's better suited for a plug boot as well as a liner that is better suited to go uphill and provide the optimal downhill experience. Um, but of course, there's also the staple products in the line, and so I'd like to hear you just break into those a bit. Of course, the Gara being a prominent one. You ski the Gara, right? Yep, that's my yeah. liner for the last 600 days or and so. And for life, you can say that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so one of the uh, first things we did when we began helping with ZipFit was we heard from a lot of people that they love the Gara, but it, they were just dumping cork into the liner, which is awesome. I mean, that's why we include cork ports. That's You can always add or remove cork. But one thing we did right off the bat was in, introduce the Gara HV, which is the same design principles as the Gara LV. It just has 20 to 25% more cork than the Gara LV. Yeah. Uh, depending on the size. Make the boot fitter's life easier. Exactly. You know, instead of saying, you know, putting the GAR LV in your shell and saying, yeah, okay, it feels really good, but you're still getting some heel lift. Imagine how good it will feel when you add cork, but the only time you can add cork is when you buy it. Yeah. Smart. So the GAR HV has been, a, and, and honestly, I ski the GAR HV right now, and I love it. Like, the more we work with the product, the more confident we are in the ability that, or the, the way the cork molds to your foot is, it, it is just such a good material. And adding, putting more cork in your shell to begin with, I'm finding, uh, is just the, the way to go. A lot of our dealers that have been working with ZipFits for a long, lot longer than we have, uh, add 
more cork into a liner than I originally would have thought was right, but they are, have just been working with it long enough to know that that cork is going to mold to the foot. It's going to fill in the voids. It's going to give the, the skier what they want. So that's the Gara LV, the Gara HV. And then for a long time, Sven has been making leather lined liners, like I showed you the Corsa, but sort of in the, the way that our lineup has evolved over the years, and it wasn't by design, but we kind of lost that leather lined sort of mid volume liner and, and Sven was always a proponent of that. So were we and anybody who's skied in them knows that that leather is a great feature. I think it, it had kind of been phased out a little bit because it's a little bit harder for the boot fitters to work with just because the initial fit is kind of tricky because when you're putting your foot in, the leather is such a high quality that it's pretty tacky. Mm -hmm. So when you're trying to jam your foot in, when that leather is brand new, it's really sticky, so it's hard to get your foot in. So the initial fit isn't as, I don't know, seamless as Agara with the neoprene interior. Um, but we're really proud to be designed and launching next year this workhorse liner, mm. which is, um, let me just rip this open. And you might have noticed that this actually is currently available on our website. So I said it's coming out next year, which it kind of is, but um, anyway, the interior is full grain leather. We have um, what in Italian is shivola, which is like a, means slip. Mm -hmm. So this neoprene little triangle nice. makes the heel entry a lot easier. Um, but this leather does a really good job of kind of molding to your lower leg anatomy over the lifetime of the liner. And then unlike any other liner we've ever made, this exterior is full grain leather. Mm -hmm. So this is a microfiber, this is a full grain leather. So this again is going to really mold to the shape of your foot. Nice, and the shape of the boot too. And the shape of the boot. Awesome. Yeah, so it's been interesting through my years of, as a boot fitter to kind of see the evolution as it fit and also to see how more, much more popular and well known the brand has become. Um, when I started, I feel like it was pretty under the radar and it was sort of a word of mouth thing. And now we're starting to see you guys really build a community around the brand. And so I'm, I would love to hear a bit more about how that's come to be and some of the athletes you're working with. Yeah, I mean, when we first became involved with ZipFit, one of the things we did was start to just kind of put feelers out to see are there athletes that are already skiing in ZipFit? Are there people that we need to get into liners that maybe should be skiing in ZipFit? And what we quickly realized is there were a lot more athletes, professional athletes skiing in ZipFits than we could keep up with as a three-person team. Mm -hmm. And we were really proud of that. And we sort of flexed that um, community to help with the development of a lot of our new prototypes. Uh, and we've been really proud of the way that you know, we don't have to, and it's really just a, a testament to Sven's legacy. And he built a product that skiers liked and it wasn't, they didn't like it because there was a huge marketing budget telling them that they should like it or giving them money to tell other people that they liked it. They skied in ZipFit because it solved the problems that they were experiencing in mm -hmm. ski boots. And we quickly realized that there were a lot of professional skiers that fit that bill and we began working with them and quickly realized that uh, that sort of genesis of like just an underground product that people liked for on its own merits uh, was sort of like this incubator for this community of people that were really passionate about the continued development of a product that they love, about you know the communication of that product. And so we've been fortunate to not have to um, seek out massive deals to pay people to tell, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so we talk about ZipFit's brand is growing and more eyes are landing on it. And that's literally all we've done is start to reach out, start to build a network. My grandma, when we took over was like, people were calling the landline at their house and she was like telling them how to uh, send her a check and the check would bounce. And then she'd like call my dad, who's a lawyer to be like, so this person's check bounced <laughs> literally. <laughs> And, and it was just such an antique system that they had set up, but at the core of that system was a product that people really loved. Yeah. So all we've done is just get more eyes on that product and um, any growth that we've experienced in the last few years is, is all credit to Sven. Yeah, that's amazing. And just to lean into some of that organic growth and 
really recognize how you can harness it to build that network. It's great. Yeah, we're, we're lucky. <laughs> yeah, and of course, um, having worked at a pretty small shop for many years, I know that ZipFit's helped us a lot as far as solving some of the problems that we regularly encountered as boot fitters. And so I'd also like to hear a bit about how maybe boot fitters and some of the skills and specialty uh, shops have worked into that as well. Yeah. The core ski community, people who spend a lot of time in their ski booths, so ski patrol, ski instructors, professional athletes, and the boot fitters that we've worked with all these years. And there are a lot of them, but uh, those boot fitters have really kept our company going through, you know, the 25 year history, purely on the belief of the product, not because it was a, you know, a popular product landing in any other magazine but Blister, but uh, because it was a really good product. Yeah, definitely. And as a boot fitter, you know, not having to constantly chase that packing out liner and band-aid solutions with all this extra foam on the stock liner and things like that, I think it's a simple solution where you're able to send the consumer out knowing that they're going to be okay for a long time. Totally. I mean, when we start working with new dealers, it's it's very common that a new dealer will, will start sort of small because it's a new product. It's not something that they've worked with before. And I always try and tell those dealers, just whatever you have to do to get your first five fittings in, just do it. Because once you see, number one, how easy of a fit it is, and number two, how happy the customer is going to be with the fit, you're going to have no problem selling these liners. It's just a matter of taking on that new product, that new system, and getting it going. Yeah, so let's talk maybe a bit about some of those techniques as far as the boot fitting aspect of zip fits. Um, so, of course, the adding of cork and maybe just a little quick overview of what that looks like. Sure. Yeah. So I have my handy prop here in this like I already said, is this is how it sits inside the, the liner. Uh, so you can see there's this little port that comes out, and that's actually accessed behind this second, or in between the second and third lace loop. Uh, that port pulls out, and then you use, I'm um, just going to put that down, you use our uh, plunger and tube to insert the tube into the pouch, and then you use the plunger to depress the cork out of the tube wherever you need it. So I'll give you an example of like a common fit issue that we use this system to solve for. Everybody knows that a zip, or hopefully people know that as if it has really excellent heel retention or heel hold. If I'm doing a fitting and the customer is like, I'm actually still getting some heel slop, I feel a little bit of lift. The first thing I'll do is insert the tube into the tongue, which is accessed up here behind this hard plastic piece. Mm -hmm. um, that tube goes all the way down into the instep, and then we depress out like a, a half tube of that cork and put it right over the instep, forcing the heel kind of down and back, uh, and then you put it back on the customer's foot. They ski it, they walk around, whatever, um, and that's a really efficient way to solve for an issue without having to totally reinvent the wheel, right? So like with a foam injection process, you really get one shot at nailing that fit. And if you don't do it right the first time, you're sort of out of luck. Whereas with the zip fit, you are always able to add cork. You're always able to m remove cork. Uh, so at any time, you can adjust the fit. Either a boot fitter can do that, or you can just do it at home. It's a really simple process. Um, so I've spent a lot of time in different boots. I also have a very finicky foot. A lot of people know that. And so for me, I spend a good bit of time in a stock liner, but I usually end up having to get in my zip fit at some point just to tolerate a longer day in a shell. And so I know my liners have been in the oven or on the stacks quite a bit. Uh, maybe just speak a bit to what that process looks like as far as being able to heat a liner, mold a liner, potentially remold a liner for different, different shells throughout its lifetime. Yeah. And that's an important thing, right? Because like we talked about, if a liner is lasting for 500, 600, 1,000 ski days, you are definitely wearing through some plastic in that frame. So the ability for the liner to constantly be molding to your foot and also be able to mold to a new shell is really important. Mm -hmm. So like to take it from the beginning, the general process for fitting a zip fit is, number one, we're applying heat to the liner. So in a shop, as you know, what that process looks like is usually putting the liner on a heat stack, which is just like an industrial boot heater, basic, or a, a boot dryer. Um, and there are ways to replicate applying that heat at home. Uh, Sven is famous for using a microwave, uh, which we get asked all the time. There are metal eyelets on the liner, but at low time intervals, 
it's okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, when you apply the heat to the liner, that cork is becoming more malleable. And that's a really important thing to mold it to your foot. It's also really important when you're transitioning from one shell to another. And that can happen because your first shell or your current shell is worn out. Or like I ski the same liner in a few different shells. So I will, when I transition from one of my shells to another, I'll put my liners on a heat stack because I'm, we, you know, we have access to one. Uh, if I didn't, I would put the liner in the microwave for 15 seconds, take it out, rotate it, put it in for another 15, do that a couple times. Um, and that gets the cork nice and malleable. And then you just step into your new shell. And assuming that shell is, you know, within this, a general last range that's similar to the shell that you're coming from, it's usually no problem at all for that liner to conform to the new shell. Yep, I've definitely seen that. Yeah. It works. <laughs> and I think the last thing maybe I'll just touch on is uh, some people have a bit of apprehension when it comes to the World Cup entry. Maybe just touch on why that's important when it comes to Zifit and why that's kind of the approach that should be taken. And uh, maybe just any little advice you have when it comes to that process. Yeah. Well, so yeah, there are a couple of reasons why World Cupping in, in that process is really important. Number one, like we talked about, there's kind of that seatbelt effect where your whole foot is being pulled down and back, which kind of primes the fit for that proper foot position that's really critical in a zip fit and that we do really well. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing is if you keep your liner in your shell and you step into it, you know, all season long, what can happen is the force of your heel going down in the shell will actually kind of manually move the cork down in the ankle. Mm -hmm. And so you'll just get a buildup of cork kind of at the base. That's not a problem that we can't solve for. All you have to do is pull the liner out and using your thumbs, you can kind of manually move the cork up. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the like I said, the cork will mold to your foot and, and we can fix that for sure. But it's really more about that sort of cinching the, the foot down and back. And I don't know, you've w presumably World Cup into your shells. Yeah. Is it a, you, it's kind of a muscle memory thing, right? Like it you, is, you and learn. there's tips and ways to make it easy. And, uh, you know, I've taught a lot of people how to do it. And so if anyone needs tips out there. What is them. your method? Um, I mean, it's for me, it's easy just to stand up, kind of open the shell up a little bit, you know, get my thumb uh, on either side of the lower boot and just jam my foot in. Yeah. And you kind of like, I find that if you point your toe down and yeah. sort of like a rotate of a little and then twist it in. But like I said, it's such, it's a muscle memory thing yeah. that at first is this like horribly awkward thing. But once you do it a couple of times, it becomes like, I, I couldn't, I, I would find it very awkward to step into a liner that's inside of a shell without world cupping into it. But I think, and then we also do sell, it's called a ski boot horn. Mm -hmm. It's a red plastic sleeve, which when we first started selling it, I was a little skeptical about it, but it works really well. And it helps people just sort of, um, it just it acts as a, a more slippery surface and you're not, your shell isn't grabbing on entry. Yeah, so I've seen zip fits land on a lot of different feet in my days, uh, but I'm curious who you kind of think the zip fit liner is for. Yeah. That's a good question. I mean, I personally think that as if it is for anybody who prioritizes either comfort or performance or a combination of those two. And from my experience, that's pretty much every skier, right? <laughs> Seems like it. Uh, and yeah, I think as if it has the reputation of being, and it has been adopted very early on by the core skier, mm -hmm. but really it's a super comfortable liner and it's a very warm liner. So um, this course is a, a good example of the warmth of the zip it because you can actually take the yeah, tongue out show but the details. yeah i will um so i'll just kind of fold this liner in half and it's okay people do this to liners guys don't yeah people do do this liners i don't know if you can see in here and in, in there's a merino wool layer and i told you about that earlier but it's i mean the comfort that you get from the merino wool and obviously the warmth of the merino wool paired with the thin slit um and that's a very important part of skiing, you know, yeah, at the end of the day. Compare yeah. it to my, my liner, see where, yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> that's nice. I mean, what we're doing with skiing is kind of an insane thing of like going out in negative degree Fahrenheit Celsius weather and putting your foot in a plastic coffin and going very fast down a snowy mountain. Yep. <laughs> so we are of the opinion that you should be comfortable while doing that. And so the wool is just a piece of that. Well, Chris, it's really cool to hear your dedication to Sven's dream and the way ZipFit is carrying out all that innovation and 
um, just really stick into some of those original goals. I'm, of course, curious what is next for ZipFit and maybe some of the things on the horizon. Yeah, what's next? Well, we're really excited to uh, be coming out with an OEM partnership with Fisher. So uh, 23, 24, there will be an RC4 Pro version of uh, Fisher's boots that will come with a ZipFit stock in the liner or in the shell, I'm sorry. And we have been approached by shell companies in the past to do a similar deal, but Fisher was the first company to like truly dedicate to the product ZipFit is mm -hmm. and recognize that there are certain costs associated with just the fact that they're handmade in Northern Italy yeah. uh, and they didn't want to change that. And, and because they were committed to the integrity of our product, uh, we are very proud to be launching that with those guys. And um, beyond that, we're going to keep plugging our community and iterating on Sven's genius and um, hopefully putting ski boot liners on people's feet. Yeah, and uh, it's awesome to have you here at the Blister Summit and go upstairs and see you sending out zip fit liners for people to try and test and i think that's a really unique experience so thank you so much for being here and it's been a real honor to talk to you and get the full history as well as hear everything that you have going on in the future awesome thanks so much thanks um.